very cheerful. Somebody's going to nip you in the butt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's Happy Hank feeding the goats at Davison Orchards, where Tamara Davison and her family offer a fun and entertaining way to experience life on a daily farm. Wow. Evolution is the word. It really was over a number of years. We've been uh, farming here for 86 years and retailing for over 30 years. So basically the farm started out um, shipping all of their apples to a packing house and then my husband and I wanted to join the family farm. So we knew we had to do something different because there wasn't quite enough money to support two families. So we'd uh, done a little bit of traveling to other markets and decided, hey, I think we can do that with my marketing uh, experience, my love for design and my husband. Um, just loves farming, loves growing things. That is a passion. I say he's got two green thumbs, not just one, because he can seem to grow anything. We just thought, well, maybe we'll give it a try. So uh, we started by diversifying our varieties of apples, and we became known as the apple people. We wanted to have a draw. Um, we really weren't on a main highway and off the beaten tracks, so we're wondering, how are we going to get people here? How are they going to find us on this Bella Vista road that doesn't seem to start or go anywhere? So we just started thinking, what can we do that's totally unique? And so growing different apples that nobody else has had was how we started. And that it just sort of progressed from there. Then we started introducing other crops. We started growing peaches and pears and plums and other things that uh, as the customer demand grew, we started diversifying. And then we started adding family fun things to do. So back in the mid 90s, we um, built a little barn with a slide and put some tractors in the sand and boys just love riding tractors. And so that was really the start of creating a destination farm was by adding our children's play area. And it's gone on from there. We do farm tours. Originally we did them in the evenings and now we found people really want to do them in the day. So we do orchard tours on an old-fashioned John Deere tractor that actually pulls apple bins around the farm. And um, we show them all the different crops we grow. So we have over 20 varieties of apples. We have all sorts of different vegetables, different tree fruits. And we just love telling people the story of farming. We feel if we can educate customers and show them where their food comes, we're creating value for them and helping to educate them. So farm tours is something we're absolutely passionate about. And you have a lot of schools and school children come through. We do, especially in the fall for apple picking and for pumpkin picking. We have a lot of school tours. Uh, in the springtime we focus on bees and blossoms, so we have a few in May and June as well, but really the fall is the big time for school tours. I understand that where we had our lovely lunch was actually the original farmhouse. It was. It was home to Auntie Mae Davison and her husband Tom. Uh, they built it in the 40s and uh, my husband grew up in just across the way there and he would run to Auntie Mae's and have treats and and so when they passed away we converted it into a cafe and we're just honored to carry on the tradition of serving wholesome farm food out of the cafe and with the view we have of the Okanagan Valley at the city of Vernon it's just a spectacular place to sit. But all the food comes from here. That's right. Most of it does, that's for sure. We grow, because we're so diversified, we grow peppers and tomatoes. We can make the best tomato sandwich you've ever seen. And then we use our peppers in the John Deere grill. And then we make soups from scratch. Our bread's baked every day, fresh from the bakery. And we have ap apple everything to eat in September. We do apple slushes and apple pie and apple tarts and you name it. We make it with apples, even apple cinnamon buns. And, then and what's this apple lunch? Avalanche. 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 Yeah. No, you're right. It's avalanche. <laughs> a play on the word avalanche. It, what it is, is our pure apple juice made into a slush. So you can actually drink it guilt-free because there's no sugar added. It's 100% pure apples. It's all natural with no preservatives. Now, one thing I think that's fabulous about what you do is you keep most of your staff employed all year round. How do you do that on a farm? Well, it's a challenge, and I wish we could say we keep everyone on, but we, we don't. But we do keep the key people on, and we make preserves all winter. So in the summertime, we freeze the fruit, and then we make it in our cannery, our old brick cannery, in the wintertime. So that's one of the value-added products that's really popular, along with our bakery um, and also our fresh-pressed apple juice. So we've got lots of value added, and the neat thing that kids especially love is the free tasting. I've heard people say it's better than Costco here because we have different tasting stations set out throughout the farm where they can try some of the products that we make right here on the farm. <laughs>
Remember Happy Hank and the goats? Well, he's not the only one making memories. This is so cute. There was a family here the other day, and they miss Davison Orchard so much that they play farm in the wintertime. And I'm thinking, farm? That must be riding a tractor. No, it was tasting samples. So they put little bowls throughout their house. Their mom gives them a bowl full of crackers, and they go around the house tasting all the different things. I thought that was so cute. So did we. Now over to a place that's really got a buzz about it to talk to Olivia Nowick. Today we're at Planet Bee Honey Farm, which is actually uh, my family business. So we've been in business about 23 years. It was started back when I was seven, so I can't really say I was involved at that point, (laughs) aside from some casual honey pouring on the weekends. Um, So yeah, we're here in Vernon, BC. We've uh, been situated here for 15 years. Um, We just moved from Armstrong just up the road where we originally started Planet B back in the 90s. So, and what do you do here for, because it's great family fun. Yep, so our mission is to educate people about the importance of honeybees, maybe help alleviate some of the fear around bees. Mm -hmm. Um, So we offer educational presentations for people of all ages. We welcome school groups um, and just cater to tourists from all over the world, um, educating them first and foremost, and then offering them the amazing products of the beehive as well. So if I brought my children here, Take me through what what they would learn. Yeah, definitely. So uh, in the summer, it's really great if you can time your visit around one of our educational presentations, which are on the hour between uh, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So those are um, a nice little classroom lecture about bees, different lengths of um, presentations to choose from. So depending on if you're traveling with young children, we obviously have a shorter version for those kids that can only, you know, pay attention for 15 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's great to tie one of those into your visit. And then, of course, trying the different kinds of honey. So we have over 25 flavors of honey. Um, Tasting the mead, which is the honey wines, is always fun as well. And then we've got our bee-friendly gardens on site as well to wander through and see some of the working hives. So what's the most misunderstood thing about bees? (laughs) Um, I would say, I guess, the fear around bees, um, being afraid that they're going to sting you. Uh, So a honeybee is only looking for flowers, really. If she's showing interest in you, you may smell like perfume. You may have a bright color on... um, But first and foremost, she's looking for flowers. So if we're calm around them, um, they're definitely not going to go out of their way to hurt us. So I would say that's uh, one of the major misconceptions that we like to help educate people on. Now, when you say there are 20 odd different flavors of honey that you do here, what makes the different flavors? That's a great question. So there's actually as many flavors of honey as there are flowering plants in the world. So hundreds of thousands, if not millions of types of honey. It's just a matter of placing your hives in a location where that single blossom is dominant at the right time of year. So for instance, if we move our hives to a blueberry orchard during blossom season, we're going to collect blueberry blossom honey. So it's actually flavored by nature, which is quite amazing. So, and, and what, what you have talked about the mead, you talked about the different varieties of honey that you have. What, what else is made? from honey Mm. here. Absolutely. So, so much more than just honey. So bees uh, will produce uh, beeswax, obviously. They uh, produce beeswax from honey. So we've got beeswax candles, which are lovely. Um, Some of the health products of the hive, like bee pollen, which is a great protein supplement. Uh, Propolis, which is like a uh, antibacterial um, sort of antiseptic property Thing that the bees seal their hive from infection with, we can actually harvest that and use it to boost our immune systems um, and fight infections. Um, so we've got that. We've got royal jelly, which is the food of the queen. Um, great for our skin, so we have it in our skincare line. Um, and then we, we use those ingredients to create things like our all-natural body care products. So for us at home with just a little back garden, what can we do to help the bees? Yeah, absolutely. So you can plant flowers for the bees. Um, So just a general rule is to look for lavenders, indigos, purples, oranges. Um, Stay away from planting red flowers. Bees actually can't see red. So they're going to show no love to your red echinacea or anything like that in the garden, which is something most people don't know. Not spraying any chemical pesticides in your garden is helpful for sure. Um, And then just uh, you can provide water source for bees. Just a little plate with some water in it and some stones is a nice way to provide water for them. Now you've got uh, two hives right here Mm -hmm. and you've got a little test of 
where's where's <laughs> the queen bee? But you, you've helped people out, right? Yeah. So over the years, I've kind of developed a little bit of a knack for it. But uh, she is right here today. So this is the queen. We mark her with a white dot to make it a little bit easier for folks to find her. Uh, but that's always a fun challenge amongst family members. You know, who's going to be the first to find her? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for a little mead tasting. I do not like that. I like dry wine. Okay. But that has a sweet finish, but it's not overly. Right, so it's there's so enough so acidity there yeah, coming from the apricots lovely. to balance that out. So, um, but it really tastes like yeah. apricots. It really does. Definitely. Yeah, my philosophy with mead is if you're going to add something to the recipe, let it be um, showing through in the flavors because otherwise, what's, what, what's the point of adding it if <laughs> no one can experience it, right? Now, if all that fruit, honey, and mead made you ravenous, you'll want to join us for the next episode of Explore Vernon as we turn our attention to the food and beverage scene. And let me tell you, it is a delicious experience. I heard. Well, she said-